My first guest plays one of my favorite inmates on Netflix, hugely successful show, Orange is the New Black. Please welcome Laura Prepon. <laughs> Did you bring your rosebud salve out here? I, I'm having some allergy <laughs> situations, so just in case during the break, I might have to reapply my rosebud. I love that you, she just bought lip, lip balm out here. It's perfect. I, I have, a, a I good have idea. like an allergy situation going on right now. I don't it's know what's happening. It's the good stuff, though. I like that yeah, stuff. Yeah, I gotta look out for, you know. I got more little cans laying around. Uh, I have like 20 of these on my house. Do you have the tubes, too? No, I don't have the tubes. I had to get the tubes, because the cans, if they get oily, I'm like. <laughs> I know, but, and that's the problem, because when it gets hot, it melts, but. Mm -hmm. but it's this so thing good. that my friend and I do is you can just open it and you go like that, and there's no germs or anything in it because oh, you just stick your face in it. I got it. <laughs> and not your fingers. That's a little trick, little trick. You know, You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm seriously going to be doing that. It's a great trick. I don't, and I, no one can use my rosebud salve. Let's be clear about that. Okay, so rosebud salve is one yes. thing we have in common. Yes. Jersey is another. I know. <laughs> yeah. Our moms are teachers, yes. another. Yeah. And you have a motorcycle. I do. I have a motorcycle, too. I knew I liked you. I knew You're I liked like you. Kindred That's spirits. That's what it is. We've got that X gene in it. Yeah, kindred spirits. Do you love riding? I do. I really do. Um, I mean, half of the year I live in New York now. I don't right. ride in New York because it's a little terrifying. And but, it's um, cold and snowy. Yes, exactly. That's <laughs> it a problem. Gets cold and That's definitely a problem. The year. But um, but yeah, I love it. It just you can kind of clear your head. And yes, absolutely. It helps when we work a lot to kind of like have something that really makes us be able to chill out. That is the same vibe that I get. I hear you also pretty handy around the kitchen. Yeah, what, um, what you I am. What you cooking skills? Well, my mom was my mom is like this eccentric gourmet chef. Um, it, she's crazy, you guys, but in an amazing way. <laughs> that sounds cool. Um, we like I never grew up with any rules. Like we literally taught ourselves pretty much everything and. I would walk into the kitchen at two o'clock in the morning, right? And because we didn't have a bedtime, she was like, "Whatever." And she would have a duck on the counter with a bicycle pump pumping air into a duck, because her phase at that time was making Peking duck. So wow. she was like pumping air into this duck, and then the next day there'd be a hanger going through its eyes, hooked to her closet door with a fan blowing on it. And because you know how, in let's be clear, <laughs> I don't. Because that's what how the skin never, gets crispy. You never been to China before? <laughs> <laughs> so There's a like, duck hanging in every window. In yeah. China. So it was like, like Chinatown normal. in my mother's it you know, sounds bedroom. Crazy. Look at her face. She's mortified. I know. I know. And also, like, she would, Think you know, <laughs> she would be like, you know, practicing her new her pina colada recipes from scratch. And I'd be 13, and we're all like taste testing it. And she wasn't <laughs> trying to. Get us like, dry, you know, she just, you know, she treated us like her friends. So she was like, okay, Laura, what do you think about this recipe? And I'm like, <laughs> it's good, mom. Give me a little refill, you know? Wow. But so how is very that? Very unorthodox. Because you got the mom who didn't give you any rules, who let you try a little pina colada at 13. <laughs> totally. Or younger, you know, right? Like, yeah. you pick your bedtime. How does that, how did, how did that translate into, you know, going on these TV schedules because then you did that 70s show. Yeah. Wonderful show. Thank you. I tell you. Thank you, guys. Big hit in my Thank household. You. And and now Orange is the New Black. I mean, the schedules are pretty sort of regimented. You know, we had, was it difficult to sort of just get to places? Did you um, get to school on time? No, or did never. you have to just, were you never. just responsible? Like, no? It's weird. Like, I honestly think that when you have nothing to rebel against, mm -hmm. you're kind of more responsible for some reason, right. you know? And what's funny is, when I first started working when I was 15, and um, I'm the youngest of five kids, and my eldest sister suggested I maybe think about modeling, which was so not my thing. But I wanted to do it, and I got signed right away, and um, my mom was like, go to Milan. So I moved to Italy by myself when I was 15, and I lived there for a year. Wow. And then I lived in Paris and London, and I was like broke. There was like roaches everywhere. I, and <laughs> I would call my mom, I'm like, there's roaches everywhere. She's like, sleep with the lights on. They don't like the light. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? Sleep with the lights on. Okay, I love your mother. <laughs> She's like, no, you're not coming home. Just sleep with the lights sleep on. Sleep with the lights on. <laughs> Didn't I teach you anything? <laughs> you know, but, yeah. it, but thank God she was the way she was, or else I, I wouldn't be where I am now without that kind of 
you know, trust in us and right. and leniency. It was pretty well, incredible. Well, that's, that's pretty that's pretty incredible to kind of be in all these in Europe on your own, basically, and then right into that '70s show. Thank God like, they spoke English on '70s show. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I, when I moved back from Europe and I booked the show, I'm like, they speak English. I'll move to LA. I don't care. <laughs> needed some, uh, needed, you know? needed your home country a little Seriously. bit. Seriously, needed to come home, and which Seriously. I'm glad you did because we got Thank you back. You. And you're so talented, Thank so you. warm, and you're so funny. Like everything. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I mean, seriously, you made us laugh for years. Um, tell me about this family tradition of yours, which I love. Your family sounds like the family that you know, I want to come to your best. house at the holidays. All of this sounds like good times. Well, we're um, Irish and Russian. I mean, we know how to you party. You cannot go harder. <laughs> you can't go harder than Irish and Russian. So yeah. I definitely want to come hang out at your well, house. Please you do. You're totally invited. Uh, you know, it's uh, my birthday is a day after St. Patrick's Day, so I barely. There barely you go, Pisces. There you go, Pisces. Day after Happy St. Happy birthday. And Irish in my family. Yeah. In my lineage. Oh boy. So I hear you guys rock out to meet Low Fitcher parties. Oh my like, God, yeah. It's a it's a family tradition ever since I can remember. Um, no matter if it's a wedding or a holiday gathering or whatever it is. Everybody in my family knows that at some point during the night, Paradise by the Dashboard Light will be played. <laughs> and all of the guys line up and all of the girls line up. And we have like a rehearsed performance. <laughs> and at my sister's wedding, the groom literally, during the thing with the broadcaster, the girls are lined up and the guys line up. And he ran down the middle and slid on his knees to her feet. And oh. she's like, soft breath. <laughs> like the whole thing. <laughs> it was like epic. It was epic. But he like oh. ran and like slid in a home oh. and she's like stops him. It's so, my family is, they're amazing. You once dated somebody and they had to learn this song before yes. they could even date you. Like this is so ingrained <laughs> in he, the tradition. Yeah, he was coming to my sister's wedding and I'm like, listen. <laughs> I'm like, this is the one thing you really need to know. And he like bought the song and he was like going over and over. Like he was like knew all the words. And then during the wedding, he was totally in it and like dancing and doing the whole thing. And I love that. Yeah. That's dedication. You have to be dedicated he to the He was mission. dedicated, yeah. It was We're going to tell everybody what Orange is the New Black is about for people who haven't seen it, though. Um, uh, basically, it's based on a true story about this woman named Piper Kerman who got, when she was in her early 20s, she got involved in this, she fell in love with this woman who made her one of her drug mules and got her involved in this drug ring. And um, they had this really kind of tumultuous relationship. And 10 years later, she's like living this socialite life in Park Slope, Brooklyn and finds out that everybody involved in the drug ring has to go to prison and serve time. And um, she goes there and realizes that, I play the manipulative drug smuggling lesbian, by the way. Um, uh, I'm the one who gets her involved <laughs> in the drug ring. That's but, a um, heck of a role. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Role. And then it's basically her life, her life in prison. Okay, now you can tell us everything that's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's so funny, people always want, we're like, oh man, we're not allowed to say anything, but, but now you guys can you know, watch season two and check it out. Of course we will. Yeah. Of course we'll watch season two. Um, it's such a wonderful cast of women. They're that you amazing, get to work right? With. And you know, I've had the great opportunity of doing a couple movies where it's been a lot of female females in the cast, like Beauty Shop or Still Man. Right. But you guys get to do this every day. What is that like working with all these wonderful women? It's honestly, it's pretty amazing. I grew up hanging out with guys. Mm -hmm. um, and when I got the show, they were like, what are you gonna do around all those women? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, but they truly are so amazing. And this show, you know, nothing is taboo for Genji. She's the creator of the show. And it's so wonderful and amazing. And we really do grow so much as actresses right. and get pushed out of our comfort zone. And the fact that we completely trust our co-stars, like I trust these women so much, we're able to like feel comfortable and safe to really go there and push ourselves as actresses. I think not only do you get to go there as actresses, but I, I, you guys hang out while you're not working. You shoot oh, at yeah. a, a female, uh, like at an old uh, prison, or do you shoot at like, what, uh, what kind of building is this? God, girl, we shoot at an abandoned children's psychiatric hospital. <laughs> which is, uh, it's, it looks Aww. great on camera, but it is not cute. Um, and then they built our prison in Queens, but a lot of the exterior stuff and my character works in the laundry that we shoot at the, the psych board. Don't we have a picture of her playing or messing around? Let me see I that mean, picture. Oh my God, that's me in the dryer. This is how, this is how close they've gotten. I mean, you it, said you completely had to trust each other. That's yes, trust. That is trust. That is trust. That is trust. <laughs> and when you're, when you're shooting in these bleak environments, it's like, 
we have to keep levity, you know what I mean? So in between takes, all the girls are dancing and singing and like, what's funny is I'm a terrible singer, but whatever, karaoke's so fun. We actually blew the speakers out of my house. I have a karaoke machine. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. It is such a pleasure. Let me know when it's carry